Hello, 3D printing peeps. Hello, resin printers. I am here with the Creality Halo Mage Pro. And I know many of you have been waiting to see it actually do something. We are gonna do that today. Finally, after a lengthy wait, Creality's resin has arrived. I was expecting the fast resin. However, I ended up getting the high precision resin due to a packing mistake on Creality's part. Looking at the packaging, you will see several different resins listed. For example, elastic resin, water washable resin, dental mode resin, jewelry cast resin, and standard resin, low odor resin, ABS-like resin, and dental cast resin. However, looking at the label on the back of this box, it says, high precision resin. So I'm not really sure why the high precision resin isn't listed on the sides of this package or what all the differences between these many different resins are, but this is what they sent me and this is what I'm gonna use. The color of this resin is skin color and they did send me two bottles of skin color. So we are gonna have some fun printing some skin color uh, models using this particular Creality High Precision Resin. And then I'm going to do some tests with other brands' resins as well. For today's first print test, we are simply going to fire up the resin feed system and watch it work. Then we are going to print something that came on the memory card. Assuming there are indeed models on the USB stick, we are going to print one of those before attempting to slice and print our own model in the next test video. I am logged into the Creality Cloud app and we are going to go ahead and turn the Halo Mage on, which will in turn connect it to my Wi-Fi and log it in to my Creality Cloud account. There she goes, the dancing Creality uh, mascot guy. Once it's booted up, it should show up as online in the Creality Cloud app. Of course, you may also do this using the Creality Cloud website. Let's refresh the app and look for an online status. Cami does indeed show as online, so I am going to go ahead and prepare to print. Before starting our print, we are going to go ahead and hook up a camera so that we can test the time-lapse function. I'm going to try the official Creality Wi-Fi Cloudbox camera. In order to capture a time-lapse of our first print, using the printer's built-in Creality Cloud Wi-Fi connection, I have installed the Creality Cloud camera to the front USB port, and we'll be using that to hopefully capture a time-lapse of our first print. Though I suppose it will be an orange time-lapse. With the camera connected, you can open Creality Cloud and click on the camera icon in order to verify that your camera is functioning and you will see a feed of what the camera is seeing. Now that we see our camera is working, let's go ahead and fill the printer with resin using the super cool all new resin feed system. We are gonna pop open the cover of our Mage Pro and we are gonna open up our box of resin. With traditional resin printers, you would open this bottle up and pour it manually into the vat. However, with the Mage Pro's automatic resin feed system, we are going to insert this tube into the bottle and feed it using the pump. Before using your resin, shake it well. When you handle resin, it is recommended that you wear gloves. I get these protective gloves in 50 packs from Walmart and I find they work really well. Open up the bottle and you will see, to my great disappointment, that there is no protective film whatsoever on the bottle. This is disappointing because it means the bottle will be open with the tube inside the bottle to feed the printer. I would rather have it protected with only a small opening for the tube. This would avoid contamination of the resin from your environment getting into your resin vat and working its way into your print. I will be looking for a pre-existing solution or coming up with a solution of my own and we will talk about that in the very near future. If you are watching this video in the future, it may already exist, so check my channel. For now, let's open this bottle again and test the resin feed system to fill the vat. 
The first thing you are going to do, of course, is put the hose into the bottle. With the hose in the bottle, I am going to manually feed the vat by pressing the in button on the printer. However, it's working, so I won't complain. But if you were expecting it to be quick, uh, which I kind of was expecting it to be quick, it is not, it is very slow. But slow does kind of make sense because this would be difficult and possibly messy if you're trying to add little bits of resin to an already full vat and it's just squirting out of there, that would be terrible. So I guess being slow makes sense. Okay, as you can see, it is very slow, but the feed system is working, and this is really cool because it's a very clean way to fill this fat. However, I am surrounded by natural light, and I am afraid the UV in that natural light will cure our brand new fresh vat of resin, so I am going to go ahead and close the vat. This is a UV blocking cover which will protect the resin from outside UV light, curing that resin inside the vat. All right, so you can see this is a very slow process. However, it does work and it has neatly and cleanly moved the resin from the bottle to the vat. Very cool, very neat. I do have a feeling there will be times I simply just take a bottle and dump it in instead. However, this does look like a clean way to add resin once the vat is already half full or perhaps if you are in the middle of a print and you need more resin. Go ahead and press the stop button to stop the feeding process because we can now go ahead and try it out using the screen. Press settings, print settings, feeding system, feed. Okay, start and you will see it has resumed feeding. When it's done, simply press stop and it will stop feeding. One thing to keep in mind, this is a very large printer with a very large vat. So it will take a lot of resin to fill it up. It will take a lot of resin just to spread out and get those initial millimeters full. So you'll find yourself putting a lot of resin in this vat to get started probably a lot more than you were used to because you have to take into account how much larger the vat is and how much more resin it will take to add the same height or depth of resin to this vat compared to a smaller vat. So don't be afraid to go ahead and load this sucker up with resin. Okay, the pump has automatically stopped and we are going to go ahead and fire off the first test print using whatever model is hiding on this USB stick. I'm going to leave the bottle connected and simply rest this cap on top of it to protect it from contamination and UV light. Before starting your print, if you want that time-lapse function, please verify it's turned on by pressing setting, other settings, time-lapse settings, and make sure time-lapse is set to on. There are other parameters in here that you can mess with, but I will be leaving it default for now. We do have our Creality camera in one USB, so we will go ahead and stick the memory card in the other. Once that memory card is in the USB, hit the print button and a listing of the models included on this USB stick should appear. It looks like we have a model of Titanic and a model of Cardio. <laughs> I don't know what Cardio is, but we are going to go ahead and print the Titanic. That sounds amazing. So just touch on Titanic and you will see the file downloaded to the Mage Pro to where we will now click on it again. It will ask you to select print parameters. Go ahead and touch that. In here, you can press settings, 
and then you can actually adjust the printing parameters from here. Things such as initial exposure and layer exposure time, etc. I am going to leave it all as is and print it as is. Pressing the start button and away we go. You might want to grab your app and verify that the camera is in fact working. One interesting thing about this printer is the air filtration system, which is indeed blowing the air out the exhaust through an internal filter where this tube would be connected and then ideally vented out a window. You can see right here that it is indeed exhausting that air from inside the printer. I originally tried to print the Titanic file several times. It failed every time. So I'm going to go ahead and print the Cardios file instead. Okay, the print has completed successfully and the screen has informed me that the time-lapse video has been successfully created and can now be uploaded to the Creality Cloud via the Creality app. The print does appear to be a success. However, this is an insanely complex print full of tons of supports for a simple test print. I highly suggest something less complex and time consuming for a test print. Now that the print is done, I'm going to turn this knob to the left to loosen the print plate and place it on some Scott's blue shop cloths. This is where we can play with a fun feature of this printer and that is the resin feed system. We can return the resin to the bottle by pressing the out button. This will begin siphoning the resin from the vat into the device through the black tube into the bottle. As the resin gets lower, you can use a plastic spatula to encourage the resin to go toward the light. It's a bit on the slow side, but as you can see, it does indeed work. And I was able to return the resin to the bottle without touching the resin with my fingers at all, without removing the bed, and without making a mess. While it's okay to leave the resin in the vat for repeated use, should you need to return the resin to a bottle or container, this little vacuum system does actually work. Uh, <laughs> and it's pretty cool. So kudos to Creality on the resin feed system. It's not gonna win any speed awards, but it does work. When it's done, just press stop and you can close your lid. All right, so here is the test model on the memory card. Mine had a file called Titanic and then another file that was this monstrosity. This is absolutely ridiculous for a test print. And this is an absolutely ridiculous amount of supports, but the printer clearly works and appears to have printed in darn good quality. This guy had a ridiculous amount of supports, way more than necessary, and it was an incredible job getting them off. This is absolutely absurd for a test model. I would like to identify whoever chose this model and whoever sliced it and put all those supports on it at Creality and fire them. But I got them off, I gave it a bath in 99% IPA, and then I gave it a shower 
in 99% IPA. You could also give it another bath in 99% IPA, but this helps replenish my rapidly evaporating bath. This bath gets contaminated after a while, so after giving it a bath in your vat, it's good to go ahead and give it a second bath or a shower with fresh, clean IPA. This is simply a container from the dollar store. I then take this container and run it on my UV machine to solidify all the resin, have it sink to the bottom, then I filter it out and put it back in. And then again, use it as my initial bath and then for a fresh shower. Unless, of course, I'm using a wash and cure machine. Then I'll use the wash and cure as the initial bath and still give it a fresh shower or bath after. But I do find this works just as well as the wash and cure machine and it's very easy. However, speaking of the wash and cure machine, we'll let this dry and then we'll cure it in a wash and cure machine. So here I am with the Anycubic Wash and Cure Plus. Of course, the plus meaning big. This is their bigger size wash and cure. And we are going to go ahead and use this to cure our new model. Pop the lid off and place your model in the center. I did happen to break the axe off because I was rushing, so I will place the axe on there as well. And then we will go ahead and set it to cure. We will go ahead and set it to cure. If you start this on wash, you will fling your model into the next dimension. You simply use the wheel to set it for a couple of minutes and then click it to start. The wash and cure machine will not run until the cover is on. So now that the machine is thoroughly pissed off, and relentlessly telling you to put the cover on. I will go ahead and do that. And the curing process will begin. Well, there it is. My very first print on the Creality Halo Mage Pro 3D resin printer. It came out really well. The detail is really nice. This is a test print and it's a lot more complicated than I would want in a test print. I would rather slice something this complicated on my own so that I am in control of important things such as supports, which I feel like this had way too many. This could have been a lot cleaner if I took my time cleaning up this print. However, the goal of a test print isn't to spend an hour cleaning up supports. It is to verify that your machine is functioning properly. That said, this machine is definitely functioning properly. This is a really good print. The next thing to see is how it behaves, slicing and printing my own model. For now, I guess I will go ahead and glue this X back on, as this will be my souvenir for my very first Halo Mage Pro print.